Hey peeps, welcome to the second uh, lesson in our My Sonet Embroidery software. A uh, couple of things, just cool, quick housekeeping. You um, can keep up with this lesson if you have older versions of uh, software such as 6D or Premiere Plus, but you might find the working environment is a little bit different. All right, so first lesson we had was introducing you into the basic layout of your software program. We made a little flower. What we want to do here is go ahead and open that flower design that we were working with so we can keep doing cool stuff. So I have gone into my Sonet, opened up a blank canvas and accepted the same hoop size as last time which is 180 by 180. If yours isn't 180 by 180 you can always change your hoop from the home tab here. You have change hoop here and you can go ahead and either use your drop downs here or enter your hoop size here. All right, so let's go over to file. Now, you can take care of a few things up here, but I find for keeping on top of it as we start, working in the file tab is more helpful. We're going to choose the file tab here, and from the file tab, choose open. And it will take you to the last place that you saved your files, and I've done mine here. Here is, it's very simple, I've only got a couple of things in here, but if you aren't sure whether or not you're on the right path, if you left click just once on your VP4 format file, you can see here a little picture of the flower from our first design, that's the flower that we did. VP4 is the native language of the software, so that's the file that we want to work with. PEZ is the native language of your sewing machine. We can work with that as well, but we are better off wherever possible working with the VP4 version, and that's what we're doing now. So one left click, oops, sorry guys, one left click will give us the little flower, and then we choose open. Cool. All right, so now that our flower is open, we're going to go ahead and add lettering to this, and this is pretty cool stuff. Uh, my Sonet software, uh, its predecessors have always excelled in really cool letter editing, uh, and this is certainly just as groovy. So from the Home tab, we're going to go ahead and navigate along to the Letter tab. Open up your Letter tab, and let's discuss what's going on here. On the left hand side, a little bit like the Super Design tab last time where we had all of these different options that we could choose from in all these different categories. We are in our Letter tab faced with a similar sort of layout. On the far left column is all of the different letterings or fonts that we can choose from in this software. Can't see much in this window whenever you see this little drop down arrow. So if you look here, you've got a little tiny drop down arrow. If we left click on that, it opens up whoa, all these different lettering options that we have. So these are categorized. So you see you have modern and then monogram. And then as you go down the list, you can scroll up and down them here with this slider. And if you find that your viewing a window is a bit small, see these three little dots just here? That means that you can click and drag and make that window more open. So going up and down, looking at all these different fonts, you can literally spend hours just looking at them. Let's break down how they work. We're going to start with, uh, let's see, the very first one at the top. So I've scrolled right back up here. First one at the top is applique. So this is a category of embroidery fonts that are applique fonts. So the name of them, so you have a little preview of the font here. If you hover over the top, you'll see the name of it, but also written underneath is your font name too. Next to your font name, you have UC in this instance here, which means that this font is just uppercase. So it's called Antigua Patch. And UC means that this font is just uppercase. So there's no lowercase a, b, c, d, just uppercase in this font. Then next to it is the size range that this font will actually most optimally stitch out. So that is between 40 millimeters or four centimeters and 100 millimeters, which is like 10 centimeters, four inches. So this is actually a really big font. 
As we go down the list though, you'll see things change. If we go past the applique, and as you can imagine, applique by its nature, you know, they have to be pretty large. We scoot down to display this little category here. You'll see this little curls font here, or this is called Abbey. Abbey is only 15 to 25 millimeters. If you try and take a design that's 25 millimeters maximum ideal stitch out and make it 60 millimeters, it's going to look just all bleh. So you want to try and just be a little mindful of the maximum and minimum sizing of these fonts when you choose your font. And seeing that we're here, good old curls or Abbey, let's choose that. Now looking at Abbey, there's two versions, 15 to 25 millimeter or 25 to 100 millimeters. So this font's been created for bigger sizes. We want to work with the little one, so I'm going to left click and choose that font. So it's now displayed in this window here. And a little preview shows us we have uppercase and lowercase. And you can see here there's no restrictions. It's just Abby 15 to 25. So we know we have uppercase and lowercase to choose from. Let's skip over Font Manager. Whole nother lesson on that one down the track. We've chosen Abby. And now in this space here is where we go ahead and type out our word. We're going to left click in here and type in something very creative. Capital F, lowercase L, O, W, E, R, S. Cool? That is what we are going to type. So we've chosen this letter. We've Sorry, lettering. This is the letters that we want to use. And here is the size. Now, sometimes you can't work out exactly what size you want. You're going to have to scale it a bit in your hoop. But if you can ballpark here, it's going to be easier for you. We're going to stick with 15 millimeter because the flower is little. So we only want a little font to go with it. We're going to skip over all of these shenanigans today. We'll do that in the same lesson where we get into the font manager. Some very cool, complicated, powerful uh, font editing features in this software. And scoot over to color sort. You want to make sure that color sort is turned on. Otherwise, you have to do a stop and stop and stop and stop between each letter in your word. And we don't want that. So make sure that color sort is turned on. And at the top here, you can choose whether or not you want the jump stitch between the letters cut or if you want them to stay stitched together. And typically we choose cut. And then we're going to ignore spacing again but we and also alignment. We'll look at that in our next lesson. So we are going to go ahead and font chosen, words chosen, size chosen, apply. And there it is. Dropped in the center of the hoop, the center of the design is lined up with the center of the hoop, which is on top of the flower. We want to move this guy, so I'm going to click and hold on it and drag it up to whatever we want it to be. Now, you can uh, grab and hold and move your uh, design, put it wherever you'd like it to be. But if you want that to be nice and centralized you can or if you want to do tiny little movements you can also hold down the arrow keys on your keyboard as you can see that sliding it straight up that center line because i'm holding the up arrow on my keyboard a little bit slower but if we want precise movement we can tweak it ever so slightly with your arrows so get used to doing a combination of grabbing things and moving them with your actual cursor or also fine tuning things little tiny extra movements and we'll zoom right in so that you can see what I mean. Do, do, do. We want this to just be above our flower because I'm using the arrow. I can see and get right in there and just do little tiny movements. All right. So on your film strip on the left hand side, you have your flower and your word flowers. Let's go back to normal view and let's go to the home tab here for good practice. And Looking at how we navigate between these two embroidery designs, I can either choose flowers here to select it, or I can come over here and left click on this film strip. If you have lots and lots of things going on in here, being able to pick the parts of the design you want to edit out by clicking it on that film strip is very, very cool. Now we have flowers chosen, and we want to talk about 
the way a font works is very similar to our first lesson as to how those super designs work. This is a embroidered design in theory. So it's not actually been converted to stitches yet. So if we go over here to our design panel, at the moment, the word flowers has 1,444 stitches. It's 64 centimeters, uh, millimeters wide, 16 millimeters high, and has one color. If I grab this corner, just like we did with the flower, I can resize it and change it. Now by wobbling this little cursor around, I can make it disproportional, so it's all squished up, and then let that go, and you'll see it's recalculated those stitches. We don't want it to look all weird like that, but we want to make it bigger, so we're going to go right up to our mate at undo, and instead of just grabbing this corner and moving it, we're going to hold down shift and grab it and move it, which means we are resizing, but we are keeping our aspect ratio. Cool. So 2147 stitches now. The recalculation has been done. And this guy here is now the size that we want. And remembering we can change that size more accurately with modify design. We won't dwell on that too much because I want to show you what else we can do with this flower font. So if we go back to our lettering. So our letter tab up here. We have the word flowers still here. And without doing anything more, we can just hit apply. And we have a repeat of that word. Hit delete to get rid of it. Apply, make another one. If we don't want it, I can just hit the delete keyboard, sorry, delete button on the keyboard and get rid of it. The advantage of that means that we can keep this font information, keep this side information, but change the lettering. So if we go flowers rule, whoops, gosh like so and then choose apply all of that original information has been applied to the new word so we have flowers and we have rule and we're going to make that rule a little bit bigger because you made the flowers bigger so holding down my shift key and dragging that out until it is the same looks the same we're done we can grab this guy here and move him all around put him wherever we want it to be do, 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 do. So as I click on each one, I'm choosing it. Or if I want to be more specific, I can go ahead and use my film strip over here. Now what we want is we want this flower here to line up in the center. So we could ballpark it. That little dot here in the middle is the middle of the embroidery design. But instead, we are going to go to our home tab. So that guy there. And we're going to choose alignment so we have the word flowers selected we're going to choose alignment and choose center in the hoop oops sorry center in hoop and then using our up and down slider we are using our arrows on our keyboard to slide that up through the center of the hoop without it wobbling off to the left and to the right and then the rule we're going to center in the hoop again. See it drops it dead set in the center. And then because I'm using that down arrow, it's taking it down that center axis. And we can get that exactly where we want it without wobbling it with our hands. Alrighty, so that is in our home tab, a center in the hoop, takes the design back to the dead center, and then we can slide it up or down as we want to using our arrows on our keyboard. That's pretty cool, I hear you think. But oh, I don't know if I like that font. Let's go ahead and go back into our letter tab here. And let's go and hmm, put this flower up here. Let's do flowers again. But let's change the font here. So something else. That one there. Looks good. So flowers is now going to be in this font and we're going to hit apply and there we have our flowers here. So by leaving this original one and repeating it with a different font, we can compare the two and see which one we like. And I think you'll agree this one here is a little bit fussy. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So now with rule, we've got this font chosen. Let's change the word flowers to rule so we get a second copy in our new font. 
Yeah, I reckon that's a better way to go. So left click on the original rule and delete it. And let's get this guy and move it up here. Now, there's lots of different ways that we can do things, but here we're just getting a handle on the basics today. So we've chosen the font, we've chosen the lettering, and we've applied the lettering. And while that's really cool, we've got a really nice software program here. We can do more than just good old flowers rule. I'm gonna get this original flowers and just move it up here out of the way. And it doesn't have to be in the hoop. At this point, we can just drop it over here and get rule and drop it up here next to it. And this is like our work area, our desk. We can put junk that we don't know that we want to get rid of yet over here and use it as a reference. So we can see how that font looks and maybe go back to using it. Or we're going to type the word flower in again, flowers. And we're going to click this little down arrow here. So at the moment there's nothing going on and this looks very much like there's no particular big deal. But when you hit this little down arrow, look at all these cool silhouettes. These are the layout of the wording that you've just typed. So if you have a look here, we've got a rectangle chosen or a horizontal block, which gave us the word flowers nice and flat. Let's choose this little circle clockwise icon, left click and apply. <coughs> and there is our flowers on a circle. Wherever you see a green box in your font uh, editing function, it means you can change it. So if I drag that circle out, the word flowers is spread out more widely because the circle's bigger. And if I bring this in very tight, the word flowers is curved over more. So that's our circle. If that's what we want and we're done with it, if we just click away, we can come back and edit that circle anytime we want. So if we want to tweak this, we can go ahead and change not only the size of the circle, but also the position of that green dot is the center of the word flowers. So we can do flowers, flowers, etc., etc., etc. Let's have some fun with some other stuff. I'm just going to straight up just delete this. So again, you can choose it from the uh, film strip on the side and hit delete on your keyboard. And we still have all the typing here. We've still got our sizing and our font chosen, but we're going to change our shape to, let's go down the list and change it to, oh, this is pretty cool. Let's do this one. And hit apply. And now you can see it's contorted. And each green thing is something you can change. So you can go ahead and change how that contortion affects the word. Cool. The only green thing we want you not to change at the moment wherever you see it is the green dot in the middle of the embroidered design. It has a cross in the middle of it. See this little green dot here with the cross? Just leave that for now. We don't want to change it. I don't know why I zoomed in there. It doesn't change the size of that little cross. Anyway, that's what we want to leave. Everything else we can grab and move. So wherever we see a little green box, we can move it around and it will change the way that font works. Let's hit delete and try another shape. Let's go ahead and do this one here. This is cool. So this gives us a flat top and a curve underneath. And again, we can change the concave, change the way the word interacts with the envelope that it's being framed in. Cool? Cool. So we might go with this one here at the top. And let's go ahead and change our rule. And let's go into here and we're going to do the opposite. So see this is the top, let's do the bottom like so, and apply, and control it a little bit, job done. So we don't want these guys anymore, we're going to delete them. I think we can all agree that those envelopes are cool, remembering you can pick it from the side and then hit delete to get rid of it. Now we have flowers and we have rule. So the best thing you can do for this software is to experiment a little bit, choose different fonts, do the same word every time. If you want to do my name, Penny, 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 your name might make more sense. 
and then each time you do it change the shapes to different shapes and fiddle with those green dots to change the way those shapes work there's an incredible amount you can do with those fonts as I said but for you to start off with this is a really powerful beginner's step and once you have that all done we're now going to talk about colors so at the moment the word flowers and the word rule are both a cool lime or well, sort of like a mint green color but we really want them to match the color of the center of this flower here obviously you thread the embroidery machine so you control the colors but if you take care of changing them now you don't have to remember when you're on the machine so first of all let's select the little flower by picking it in the film strip and we want to hover over this red just hover over and wait and it will tell us that the color on that one there is in the sulky rayon range and it is one, two, six, three, Red Jubilee. So we are now going to go to our flowers and double click on the color. And when we double click on the color, we now go into this color editing box. It lets us change the colors that appear on the screen and also the message that goes to the sewing machine to say what color is going to be next. Now, by default, mine goes to Robinson Anton and Rayon 40. And I can't stress this enough. If you're buying embroidery thread, please buy Rayon. Polyester is horrible for your machine. In comparison to Rayon, your polyester is an incredibly difficult uh, stitch. It gets causes your senses to give uh, misadventure. So wherever you're buying embroidery thread, try and buy rayon if you can. In here is a whole heap of different embroidery threads pre-programmed into it. The uh, embroidery thread mentioned for the red was um, sulky rayon, if I remember correctly. And now this gives us all the sulky rayon ranges of colors. And ours was one, two, six, three. So I'm going to this fine thread section here da -da, and typing in one, two, six, three. And you'll see here it's called Red Jubilee. So we're in the right place and say OK. And so now you'll see our flowers matches our dot in here. Let's get rule and do the same thing. Double click. Change the drop down here to the sulky rayon to match the original embroidery design. In fine thread here, type in one, two, six, three, and say okay. Alrighty, so we have flowers, rule, red in the center of the flower, and the little yellow outside. Let's check out how this is going to stitch right up the top. Do, 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 do. Now we know here it's going to be flower, then flowers, then rule. But let's see how it sews by looking up at this guy here, the design player, right up the top. If you click on this, whoop, and this is the preview of the embroidery design. If you hit play, it's going to start stitching it out for you. Now we're all impatient, so we always go down here and just hit this fast forward. So it doubles the speed, doubles the speed, doubles the speed. And you can see it's going to stitch the yellow, then the red for the center of the flower, the word flower at the top, and the word rule underneath. If you want to, you can download and record this. This is really powerful. It helps you preview how an embroidery design is going to work as you play with it and create it. It's incredibly helpful to have. Up here next to your design player, you also have your life view. If you click on this, it gives you a nice 3D picture of your embroidery design and then if you scroll around using this little slider down here you can see how it's going to react to different light and you can take pictures and record those and share them as well. Alright so we now have flowers, flower center rule all in red. If we click on home and choose box select and drag a box over everything. We now have the whole embroidery design as separate things. 
we want to group those together so that when it stitches out and when we handle it and when we move it, it is one embroidery design. Before you do this next step, it is time to file and save as and save your design thus far because when we take the next step, you won't be able to go back in and break things up quite as easily. So file, save as, put it in your file where you can find it and then come back and with box select, drag around the embroidery design contents again. Also too, just as a side note, with your um, film strip now, you can click on the top embroidery design component, go down to the bottom one, hold shift and click, and it will select everything as well. So both roads lead to Rome. Now that we have that done, we want this to be one embroidery design, and we go from our home tab to combine, and we want to combine selected. So now, instead of having three embroidery designs, we now have one. So if you look over here in your film strip, flowers rule with a little flower in the middle. Over here on our right-hand side, we have our color changes for the embroidery design. Every time you see a color change with a number next to it, that's when the sewing machine stops and says you have to thread that color. We don't want it to do that. We really just want it to do a yellow and red. So we're going to go up to where we chose combine, which is no longer available because we have combined everything. And underneath we have color sort. We're going to left click on this color sort here. And if you look to the right, you will see we now have a yellow and a red, which means it will sew the yellow outside first and then do all the red in one go. So I will undo that up here so you can see it. One, two, three, four choose color sort and now we have one and two now if you've made a mistake here and you have combined it don't sweat it you can undo the thing about this undo is it literally steps back every action you've taken so that you can scroll back to where you realize you've made a mistake and keep going it's like a time machine for your embroidery software so let's choose undo and you'll notice it's broken up the color sort undo again we now have separate embroidery designs, not one grouped embroidery design. Sorry, not one combined embroidery design. Now, what we're going to do here is, at the moment, it's stitching out flowers rule and the flower on top. If I grab this flower and click and hold with my left key, uh, sorry, my left mouse button, and drag it down until this line appears at the bottom of the list, and let go, the flower is now last. So flowers rule. And if you have a look at these guys together, so let's group them all up, box select, drag around, or I can select on the first one, hold down shift in the film strip and select the last one, and then combine selected. We now have this little yellow in the middle. So red for the top, red for the bottom, red for the center of the flower, but there's a yellow in the middle because the digitizing and stitch order for this flower is yellow, then red. And now if we do a color sort from here, we still get one and two. So the sewing machine will stitch red, 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 and then come back and do the yellow. This is where good money on software pays for itself. That makes life incredibly easy. All right, so at this point here, we are going to go ahead and export this embroidery design. So file, save as, first of all, so you actually have the editable software language. So the sewing, the embroidery design in the native language of the software. So file and save as. And we're going to call this one something that means something to me. So I'm going to call it YouTube Lesson 2. And you'll notice it's VP4, which is the language native to the software. And now we want to stitch this out. So we're choosing File. And then under Save As, we now have Export. And it's going to give us this option again where we can choose our embroidery language, so language native to our embroidery machine. So in my case, for my little brothers, it's PES. Choose the hoop size if necessary. It'll keep the last hoop you chose. And in this case, for me, it's a 160 by 260, which the design fits into easily. And then last but not least, 
undo the color sort. It's not going to change what's happened here. It's going to give us a nice safe result when we do more complicated stuff down the track. Now say OK. Done. And accept the changes here. Export. Cool? Cool. Alrighty, so I think that's a good little lesson too to get us going. Please experiment with those fonts there. You could probably spend a whole day just opening up all the different fonts and seeing how they look and seeing how the different font shapes are affected by that shape function here. Um, and uh, in the meantime, if you could give us a subscribe or a like, fabulous. And uh, stay tuned for our next um, uh, uh, MySoNet lesson where we will be talking uh, about resizing existing designs. Alrighty, guys. I'll catch you later. Bye.